on behalf of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, and our beloved, illustrious Acharyas of the Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Parampara, I wish to extend my sincere gratitude to each and every one of you for participating in this auspicious ceremony today. My special gratitude to Sri Maharaji for blessing this occasion on behalf of his beloved Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Vaibhav Puri Maharaj, a dear friend and god brother of our Srila Prabhupada. Today, Mokshada Ikadasi is the anniversary of that most holy of days when Lord Sri Krishna personally spoke the message of Bhagavad Gita to all of humanity for all time through his beloved devotee Arjun. We are living in times that are uncertain. For sufferings, miseries, fear is prevailing in so many places throughout this earth. The Bhagavad Gita was especially spoken in a time of crisis to teach us how we can experience and attain the highest perfection in times of the greatest crisis. Tritarashtra uvacha dharma kshetre kuru kshetre samaveda yayutshava mamaka pandavas chayva kima kuravati sanjaya. The Gita begins with this verse. Dhritarashtra, who is the king of the Kuru dynasty, is asking his assistant Sanjay, what is happening at Kurukshetra? He was especially concerned because it is Dharmakshetra. It is a place of Dharma, a place where Brahmins, sages, rishis, great personalities of all varieties of life have gone since time immemorial to perform both pious, religious, and spiritual activities. Yudhisthira and the Pandavas were completely pious. They were pure in heart. A name of Yudhisthira is Dharmaraj. He was a king of Dharma. He's the son of Dharmaraj. And Duryodhana was the personification of envy, greed, arrogance, and adharma. So Dhritarashtra was very concerned. Although his son Duryodhana had a larger army, far better resources, Kurukshetra, that holy place could have an effect that would be a great challenge to his son. Before the army, or before the battle begins, Krishna is the loving servant of his own devotee, brings the chariot of Arjuna between the armies. And he says just some simple words. 
that invoked such a stirring in the heart of Arjuna. These are the people who have assembled. Arjuna was perplexed. He knew if this war was to be fought, it would be full of sorrow and tragedy. And he saw loved ones, people he respected on both sides. He began explaining the principles of Dharma as he understood it to prove that he should not fight this battle. But then understanding his duty to protect the innocent, to uphold Dharma, he was literally engulfed, overwhelmed by uncertainty and confusion. And in that state, he ultimately turned to Krishna. He said, I have lost my composure. I'm truly confused. I don't know what is to be done, what is not to be done. Please instruct me. Srila Prabhupada explains that Arjuna was a liberated soul. He was an intimate friend of Param Brahma, the Supreme Brahman, Sri Krishna. But by Krishna's mercy upon you and me and everyone, he put Arjuna in that state of confusion to teach us that if we really want to understand Bhagavad Gita, it is not just a pious activity to bring more prosperity in our life. It is not an academic study, curiosity. Sevaya mayatedya yoga prokta puratana bhakto sime shakachiti rahasyam hetat utamam. If we want to understand Gita properly, Krishna says, we must be Krishna's devotee and Krishna's friend. Arjuna was in a state of necessity. In the Gita, Krishna tells Abram Abhavana Loka Punar Avartana Arjuna Mamu Petyatu Kontiya Punar Janmana Vityati that wherever we're living in this world, whatever situation from Brahma Loka, the highest planet, to Patala Loka, the lowest, Janma Mrityu Jaravyadi Dukkha Dosa Nudarshana. We have to grow old, get diseased, and die. We have to be born again and again. It is a place where misery is imminent. Arjuna was really miserable. He was suffering betrayal from people he loved. Confusion, how to react to that. He had, the sen he had a sense of duty that I must perform my service my dharma to humanity by protecting the principles of religion. But the conflicting emotion of compassion, he didn't want to see people hurt. He couldn't bear the thought of all the wives that would be widows and all the children that would be fatherless. It was in that state that he heard the Bhagavad Gita. All the trials and challenges that we may be enduring today, 
and all that we will inevitably endure in the future are being addressed in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna begins by explaining the nature of the true self, the jiva. Nahanyate hanyamane saride, najayate mriyate vakatachit. That the eternal soul is never born and never dies. It is not subjected to the forces of nature or time. But the forces of nature and time are so powerful. Daivi heshuguna mai mama maya duratyaya mame vamya prapadyante maya metha tarantite. This maya, which is based on the interaction of the three modes of nature with time, and the karma, the various actions that are celebrated by that combination. It's very difficult. It's very impossible to overcome. To control the mind, to control the senses, to overcome fear, lust, envy, anger, greed, illusion, These forces from all around us and within us are very difficult to overcome. This is very much the essence of the Gita. Krishna explains prakriti, how material nature works. He explains how we become bound up by karma, how we're always being consumed at every moment, we're being destroyed by time. but we can easily overcome it if we simply do one thing, take shelter of him. That is the essence of the Gita, to take shelter of the Lord. Bahunan janmanamante jnanabamampapadyate vasudeva sarvamiti samaha masudurlava. After many births and many deaths of accumulating knowledge, one comes to the point of true knowledge when one surrenders. Surrenders to Vasudev. Bhaktiya mama bijanati. Through bhakti we can attain the spiritual world. Bhaktiya tvananya yashakya aham evam vidorajana gyatam drastam chatatvaina praveshtam chapatampa. Krishna tells only through bhakti, only through devotion, and seva, can I be understood as I am? Aham sarv, aham sarv dharman parityasya ma mekam sharanam praja. Aham tvam sarva papi bio moksha yi samji masuja. Abandon all varieties of dharma and surrender to me. And he explains the process of surrender. Man manabha vamad bhakto madhya shimnam namaskuru. Mami vaishashi satyam te prati jani priyoshi. Always remember me. Become my devotee. Worship me, offer your homage to me, and this way you will come to me without fail. Aham sarvasya prabhavo mata sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante mam buddha bhava samantata. Krishna is identifying the truth of who he is to everyone. I am the source of all material and spiritual worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who know this perfectly engage in my loving service and worship me with all their hearts.
Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explained the problems of this world, who we are, and how to overcome these problems and attain eternal spiritual perfection through always remembering Krishna, through surrendering to Krishna. 500 years ago, as predicted in the Vedic literatures, that same Sri Krishna appeared as the Yuga avatar. But as, as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he comes only once in a day of Brahma. Srila Prabhupada explained that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the role of a devotee to practically show us how to attain that perfection of always remembering Krishna as he explained it in Bhagavad Gita. Just like in a school, sometimes a teacher will be teaching the students in KG how to write the alphabet. And they will say, this is how you put the A. And they don't have to go, the teacher already knows, doesn't need to go through the lesson, but goes through the lesson just to teach the students how to do it. Vedaham samati thani varatamanani charjana bhavashani chabutani mam to vedana Krishna tells, I know everything in the past, everything that's, that's to come. I know everything. I know every living being, every thought, every word, every action that everyone has ever done and ever will do. But yet Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself in the role of his own devotee to teach us how to love God. Satatam kirtayanto mam tavita. Krishna tells in Gita we should always chant his names and glories. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the essence of the Vedas of how to attain perfection in this age of Kali. Adunama, Adunama, Adunam Eva Kevalam, Kalo Nasteva, Nasteva, Nasteva Gatiranyata. And it's a joyful process. Parama Karuna, Pahuntui Jana, Nitai Goro Jangra, Tava Avatara, Sarasiromani Kevala Ananda Kanda. It's a joyful process. Chanting the holy names of the Lord, dancing taking prasad, rendering loving service in the association of devotees, hearing the glories of Krishna. But even such a joyful process is sometimes very difficult for us in this Kali Yuga. But if we are sincere, if we're sincere to just remember Krishna, to live with the values and the character that Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita, of the qual to try to strive to follow in the footsteps of the great souls who imbibe those qualities and values that the Gita teaches. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained by Gopi Just by trying to be sincerely and honestly the servant of the servant of the servant. To develop a taste for hearing about the Lord and chanting his holy names. By Krishna's grace, just seeing our attempt to take shelter in that way, Krishna will reveal himself within our hearts and awaken our eternal nature, our prema bhakti. Srila Prabhupada, he took this message throughout the world, and especially he gave so many of his years of his life 
to give translation and the purports according to the great acharyas for many centuries in his Bhagavad Gita as it is. People in the West, people in the East, people in the North and people in the South. It was translated into so many hundreds of languages. It's the largest selling Bhagavad Gita in the history of the world. And we are all given the opportunity to participate in sharing this beautiful knowledge of the Gita and facilitating the distribution of this beautiful book, through distributing it ourselves, and by studying it in the association of practitioners and by living a life exemplary of the teachings of the Gita. on this day of Mokshada Akadasi, to offer our prayers, to offer our services, to chant the holy names of the Lord with sincerity, great showers of blessings and mercy come upon us, and we can invoke those blessings upon the whole world. Thank you very much. Thank mm-hmm. you.